Welcome to my channel where we discuss everything and all things politics, especially about the 2023 presidential election held in Nigeria on February 25, 2023. And the results announced on March 1st, 2023, in which, in controversial circumstances, Aswadibola Metinubu was declared the winner of the election, despite the protestations of the opposition parties that their grievances should be looked into before the announcement of the result. The chairman of INEC, Mahmoud Yaku, announced the result. And that's what Bola Medjinuba has been sworn in as the president of Nigeria on May 29, 2023. And right now, he is the one running the country until the Supreme Court finally decide who actually won the election because most Nigerians do not believe that he won the election. But it is now left for the courts to decide the true outcome. I like the way Bishop Kuka put it. He said that the goal, a goal was scored, but now Nigerians are waiting to find out through VAR whether that goal was actually a goal. So while we wait, one of the trending hashtags is that all eyes is on the judiciary. Now, since Aswadbola Metinubu has been running the country as the president and commander-in-chief of the armed forces, he has been responsible for a whole lot of policies that have been implemented in the country. But there are two policy somersaults that Tinubu has made that is not coming out in the open to tell Nigerians that he has made a somersault. Perhaps it will make him look bad in the eyes of the uh, reasonable members of the public. One is that, 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 is that his floating of the Naira has failed. Because the Naira, since the floating, has, written, has received a lot of beating thorough beating to the level that the Bloomberg, you know the Bloomberg, one of the biggest financial television company and print media organization in the world that is dedicated to business, that the Bloomberg, American-owned Bloomberg, has projected that Naira must devalue to 1,500 Naira to the dollar to get anywhere near to the East true value under the floating arrangement that Naira has to reach 1,500 Naira to the dollar for it to come anything near real value. Right now, you can see that government is battling because the, the Naira now is knocking at the door of 1,000 Naira to the dollar. But Bloomberg, they should know better. They are projecting 1,500 Naira. And I'm sure that's not what Aswadibola Metinubu wanted for Nigeria, if he had known better. And another thing that came up from the so-called reform they are doing now with the CBN, under the floating arrangement is that our foreign reserve is depleted. That we don't have enough dollars to defend the Naira. Now, if you don't have enough dollars in foreign reserve to defend the dollar, why then do you embark on floating the Naira? That is why they have failed. Why do you embark on floating the Naira? when you don't have the means to strengthen it, to defend it, like other major currencies have been defended by their foreign reserve, by their productivity. Nigeria is an import-dependent country, depending only on crude oil. Even the crude oil itself is not well accounted for. There are reports that for several months, even the NNPC has not remitted anything to the Treasury. 
The reserve is going down, and the international community, they are watching all this. So they have not come out to tell Nigeria and they have failed in this deep policy. It's a, it's a good failure. Okay? Now, by their floating of the Naira, they have discovered, like Governor MFLA, the detained and suspended governor of Central Bank, and Muhammad Buhari, former president of the country, who floated the Naira in 2016. They, they have discovered like them that floating the Naira does not work for an import-dependent country like Nigeria. And there are strong indications that if the floating is not halted, Naira will crumble and become like the Zimbabwean dollar. Okay? You have heard stories about the Zimbabwean dollar. How it so collapsed to the level that if you give somebody 10,000 Naira and convert it to the Zimbabwean dollar, they may lose truck to carry it because it's a whole lot of money. So that's the failure they don't want any people to know. Now, instead of blaming themselves for their faulty foreign exchange policy, they are blaming, you know who they are blaming? They are blaming the currency speculators and BDC operators. To me, that's a misplacement of blame. Foreign speculators will always speculate. There is no currency in the world in which uh, foreign currency speculators will not speculate. Local currency speculators will not speculate. Your job as the manager of the foreign exchange of a country is to be in a position where the speculators cannot be able to determine your state of your currency because you have enough reserve to defend your currency. You have enough reserve to protect your currency. It is not blaming, there will always be speculators. There are those all over the world. People like billionaires, like George Soros, that's what they're dealing, currencies. They speculate on currencies, from dollars to pounds to Dutchess mark, whatsoever, they are speculators. You can't, you can't outlaw them, and you can't even stop them. All this idea of clamping down on BDC speculators, it's just a waste of time, especially when they don't have enough money, enough dollars in the reserve to defend the Naira. If you are talking about the local speculators you are seeing on the streets of Abuja and Lagos, what about the speculators who are not even in, within the geographic area of Nigeria? So that's where they got, they got it wrong, and they are not ready to admit their own uh, mistake. Okay? They are not ready to admit their own uh, mistake. Now, secondly, like the floating of the Naira, uh, the subsidy removal. The subsidy removal is, uh, is also like the floating of the Naira. They have failed in that. It's another policy that the government is not telling Nigerians the truth. You know, initially, when they started the floating of the, 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 uh, the removal of the subsidy, they said that demand and supply will determine the price of fuel in Nigeria. Now, faced with impending rise in price of fuel, that could see a liter of fuel selling for 750 naira per liter, the government panicked. What did they do? They panicked. And now they have, through the back door, entered return back to subsidy. Because what did you get? Of course, people are not being told the real truth. The Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, Company Limited, they have used it as a cover 
to borrow three billion dollars from Afri African Export Import Bank. And what is the aim of that? To stabilize the foreign exchange. So they want to stabilize the foreign exchange. They didn't allow the demand and supply again. What happened to the demand and supply? That is what Tinubu and his financial managers are not telling Nigeria. What happens to the demand and supply that you are now using the back door to borrow $3 billion? The same thing you are accusing, accusing MFL of doing, that he was borrowing money to defend the Naira. You have now gone back to your forbid. But if you are asked, you say it's, it's, it's NMPC that borrowed. As if NMPC fell down from the moon. It's not part of the Nigerian establishment. Federal government don't have a hold in India, in that company. They don't want to tell Nigerians the truth. Because what they are trying to do is to prevent a serious backlash that will follow if the price of a liter of fuel is to get to 750 naira per liter. Of course, Nigerians may enjoy it, but it will be piling up of anger against the government that nobody knows the day there will be implosion when people can no longer take it. So what it means is that they have realized that what they are condemning MFL, saying that they are doing reform, floating the Naira, all those stories. They have gone back to the MFL style because that is the only sustainable way to be able to protect the Naira, at least for a while, before they will be able to, they may become unable to do anything about it. What does it show you? It shows you that while Aswadibola Metribu was touted as an experienced leader, before, in fact, when he was coming in, he was described as an accountant. He knows the economy very well. Look at what he did in Lagos. Look at what he did in Lagos. That is going to replicate it in Nigeria. But you can see a whole lot of 40 steps that he has taken that the economy is paying a huge price for it. Right now, because of these 40 policies, Millions of Nigerians have been thrown into poverty. Many companies are laying off workers. People are suffering. Nigerians have never witnessed the kind of suffering being, being, being observed right now in their country, being suffered by Nigerians. All because of an attempt to be different from the previous administration without actually knowing how to do it. So the, the consolation they used to have or say is that all the presidential candidates say they will remove fuel subsidy. So everybody is a, a, a given. But P2B, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, had an idea on how to do it. He would have been methodical in, in, in removal of fuel subsidy. And he would have ensured there's a lot of buffer for him to be able to do it. He was, Peter B was insistent that he would remove subsidy. But you can bet that he wouldn't have removed it the way this government did it. And it has backfired. And the government has fought, has been forced to go back to ease from it. Right now, whether they tell you that or not, but I'm telling you here, there is subsidy now through the back door because the removal of the subsidy was not done very well. It was not done scientifically. It was done in a rush for political gain to be seen to have, to have hit the ground running when actually that was not what was needed. It needed a thoughtful leader a thoughtful leader who understands how the economy works. 
in the way, go and listen to Peter Obi when he talks about how to re-engineer this economy. He keep on hammering on productivity. Productivity. That was why the mantra of his campaign was moving Nigeria from consumption to production. That is the only way you can defend the Naira. And Peter Obi said it. He, that he will ensure that nobody spend dollars in Nigeria. That he will buy refined products in Naira from Nigerian, Nigerian uh, refiners. And he will remove dollars from the hands of politicians. Because you see, politicians, they have dollars. But manufacturers, like Innocent Motors, don't have it. They don't have the dollars. They need to manufacture. Agri processors don't have the dollars to be able to get in the equipment they need to engender productivity in the country, to add value to the agricultural value chain. But politicians have millions of dollars in their homes. They use in dispensing favors. It is used as a means of bribery and corruption. Peter will be talking about removing it from the hands of these people. Has the present administration shown courage to remove it from those who are not supposed to be holding it and put it in the hands of the producers, those who will manufacture for the growth of the economy? They are not going to do it because if they themselves, how did they emerge as presidential candidates in their various parties? From Atikwa Bakar of the PDP, to Aswad Bola Mejidibu of the APC. Go and read the papers. During their primaries, there was dollar rain. You can Google it. I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not the originator of this. Google it. Naira rain at PDP and the APC presidential primaries. So how can they be able to be the one that will stabilize the Naira? They are not likely to, to do, achieve that success. They are not likely because you cannot give what you don't have. Thank you for watching this video. And if you are new to my channel, you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Hit the subscription button, hit the notification bell. When you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell, anytime I have a new video, you'll be among the first to know. God bless. And please don't forget to like this video because when you like it, Google will rank it high and recommend it for more people. Thank you and God bless you and yours.